Dale, let's return now to the Boston terror attack. Flags were lowered at the White House just a few hours ago. The president ordered all U.S. flags on government buildings in the country lowered to half staff through Saturday. ABC's Tamon Bradley joins us now live from Boston. And Tamon, the streets around the finish line of the Boston Marathon remain closed. Yeah, they sure do, uh, Bertha Lynn, even as residents here try uh, to get their lives back to normal. Now, so far, no group or individual has come forward and claimed responsibility. And as you can see from the traffic and the amount of people uh, out and about, folks here with a lot more security uh, are trying to get back to work and are trying to do the things they normally would. The yellow finish line on Boylston Street this morning, eerily empty, one day after thousands raced in the Boston Marathon. Debris still scattered all around. Runner Rebecca Roche says she had just crossed the finish line when the deadly twin bombs exploded. Turned around and saw the, the smoke from both bombs and thought something terrible had happened. The attack appeared time for maximum impact. At 2.50, many of the 26,000 marathon runners were finishing the race. The first blast rocked the sidewalk along the course, spewing shrapnel into the runners in the crowd and knocking runner Bill Ifring to the ground. All of a sudden, this enormous uh, blast right next to me, and uh, it just kind of buckled my legs, and I, I knew I was going down. Twelve seconds later, as many flee the scene, a second explosion less than a block away. Dr. Alan Painter was standing just 20 feet from the blast and rushed over to help the injured. It was mostly lower extremity blast injuries. Investigators are frantically searching to find out who's behind the bombings. The FBI is now in charge of that probe. Our mission is clear, to bring to justice those responsible for the marathon bombing. Bomb experts are poring over the forensic evidence, looking for clues about the explosive devices. President Obama spoke again this morning. So if you want to know who we are, what America is, how we respond to evil, that's it. Selflessly, compassionately, unafraid. Investigators spent the night at a residence near uh, the airport here in Boston. They also interviewed a Saudi man who's described as a person of interest. And in Bertha, so far, there are still no suspects. Live in Boston, Tamon Bradley, 7 News. Of course, Tamon, we're hanging on every shred from the investigation, every new development. What are they saying about all those packages that investigators searched yesterday? Well, Bertha Lynn, we uh, learned from uh, federal law enforcement officials today at a briefing that, in fact, they searched all of those packages and they didn't find any unexploded devices. So there were just two bombs that went off. Uh, they have uh, gone over uh, the finish line and the rest of the surrounding area, and they believe uh, that there is no further threat to the city. So a bit of good news. Thank you so much. That's Tamon Bradley reporting to us from Boston. 7 News is hearing from some of the 521 Colorado runners who were near the site of the blasts. Denver runner Junko Kazukawa took this picture just moments after the explosions. She had finished the race and left the medical tent area minutes before the chaos. Junko says when she heard the loud bangs and saw the white smoke, she knew something was wrong. This is my 10th Boston Marathon. I never think this is going to happen. I mean, you know, everybody's happy, beautiful day, you know, I don't know, something's wrong in the world. Kazukawa wasn't alone. Her friend Lucy West was stuck on the course and had to use a stranger's phone to call her husband to let him know that she was okay. Now, we also talked with the organizers of the largest race in Colorado, the Boulder Boulder. More than 50,000 people are expected to take part in the race on Memorial Day, which is just six weeks away. Race organizers say they always have multiple contingency plans in place in case there are problems along the route. The race director will meet with Boulder police on Thursday to talk about security concerns.